Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. All right, let's take a look at offsets and overlaps. Offsets and overlaps, one of the most important things to understand to really get things to look right. You're staring right now, this is my model Lisa. This is a series of scans that we have from my anatomy class. And I want to talk about the offsets here in the rib cage. Specifically, I want to talk about which is overlapping which. So the rib cage, right? Which one is dominant there? How about the abdominal muscles? Who's dominant there? What, what about the external oblique and all of these fingers that move out like this? How do we understand how these guys operate and who's on top, who's on bottom, and how we can really help them connect? Because one of the most difficult things that we have in sculpting is this view. It's the view that 2D doesn't give us. It's the view that we need. Notice how this form comes in as a big strong plane for the abdomens up here. And then look at this almost straight side view, right? So up here in the upper portion, where is that? Let's look here. All right. So that's somewhere around where the eighth rib is going straight across, bridging down here to the ninth rib. You can see that the abdominal area is largely a plane that fits within this whole thoracic arch. Arch of Apollo, as they used to call it. Or actually, the Arch of Apollo is right in here. It doesn't include the xiphoid. Those are two totally different things. Now, that's all one nice, simple plane. But then as we get down into the 10th rib and the false ribs the abdominal muscles change and there's a different structure, there's a different path happening there. Let's do that in real simple crystal clear. There we go. So we're gonna have a nice side view and then look at this. This now changes the entire plane. All right. And to really hone this in, if you want, we can just draw straight lines from this view, and then you'll be able to see from below how they're orchestrated. Do you see that? You see that stepping down and then front plane and then coming like this? So how do you start to make sense out of this? Well, the key thing about knowing your overlaps, your offsets and your overlaps, is you got to have your landmarks. All right, that's why we have landmarks. Because landmarks tell you when things change. They allow you to hang ideas on top of that. So if there's an idea here, it is that the eighth rib, right here, this kind of structure of the eighth and ninth rib, right there, that's a landmark where things change. And the, land, and the, the whole system kind of just goes through a bit of a different um, procedure. So if we were to sit here and sculpt over the top of this, let's go into clay build. If I'll set my embed down to three, I'll set my um, alpha to this, and let's get to a little bit of work. Lower the Z intensity. So the first thing we want to do, if we were to build this back up, in fact, let's do that. We're going to build this back up. I'm just going to get rid of this. So I'm going to set my embed up higher. And I've got the other side over there. But I'm just going to carve this out real quick. Just to give us a really good example of how to make this happen. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to establish the thoracic arch. So we really need to get in there and find that eighth rib as it comes down, right? And you got to find it from this view too. Look at how far forward that is. Look at how much movement there is underneath, okay? But notice that it transitions to a 
a, a change in the plane pretty quick. Okay, and then we're going to start to transition right there behind that breast. So right there. So I've helped to find these simple planes. Now we're going to come and make sure that we've got the eighth rib and how that's transitioning down here into the ninth rib. And I'll look from below and I'll say, okay, eighth rib, ninth rib. Okay. I need to give this a little bit more volume, a little bit more love. And right now I'm dealing with a very high polygon object. And I'll switch over to the move brush just because it'll take a little bit longer. There we go. So I'm getting that thoracic arch in there. And I'll look from the other side and I'll compare it. Yeah. And I'll look from below. Okay. Uh, that can get out there a little bit more. Yeah. Look from above. I'm going to press Alt. There we go. Okay, it's a little drop. After the eighth rib, we drop it back a little bit. All right, so we technically have a bit of our rib cage right there, ready for us to move forward. I'm noticing that there's this plane change right here, so I'm going to make sure that that rib cage, that thoracic rib cage, changes its plane in the right place. Okay, and again, that's the eighth rib coming in right there. It comes down here a little bit for the ninth rib to hook up to it. And then we got our tenth rib down in here. Okay. So we've got that rib, that arch in there. Now the next thing that we'll do is we'll come in here with the abdominal muscles. You see me kind of just leveling these guys up. I'm going to come straight down from that eighth rib. I'm coming straight down into the bowl of the belly, right? It's really hard to see here because um, of the high polygon count. But if we were to come in here, we say the standard brush, you know, we're coming down in this area. Hopefully you can see, whoops, be good if you used sculpting. Yeah, we're focused on that line. So I'm gonna come back into clay buildup. And I'm really just focused on a flat plane. Notice how I add up the outside edge, and then I press Alt to just make it fit in with everything else. Okay, now this doesn't have to be pretty. I'm not trying to get all the musculature elements in there right now. What I'm trying to do is just show you the simple offset and overlap that occurs. Right? So there, we've got a thoracic arch, we've got this abdominal coming down and serving as a plane all the way to here, which is really nice. And then now we've got to figure out what happens down in this gray area. So in this gray area, this is different. We know that the abdominal is right here, but we know that the external oblique is going to be set backwards and it's going to come up more to the 10th rib. So I'm going to come in and fill this in and instead of going to the 9th rib and just being like, well, it's something like this and then I lose everything, right? I lose all that individual character. Now I'm looking for insertions and origins or simply the offsets, the overlaps and I'm just saying, okay, so you're coming in as a flat plane right in there to that 10th rib. And then I'll round you off a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll just subtly blend, just rubbing it along right there. There we go.
Okay. And there we go. We've been able to, in real simple terms, help to establish a little bit more character knowing the abdominals come here, the external obliques go there. Now you go in and you add some of the individual characteristics like the fact that it kind of bulges out and the muscle body is a little bit thicker down here. You can kind of see it. And we start to get all of this just different variation that happens. And if you want, you can come in and set your in-bed really low like a 2. And you just rub this across the surface. Maybe you come in with an alpha like this. It's very good for giving you a nice surface. You can press alt. But if you blend this while you're creating the structure, it's going to be a big issue. You're not going to get the structure that you want. You got to put your structure in first. You got to put your offset, your overlaps in first. Deal? If it's a deal, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know how this helped you, if this helped you. And I will talk to you later. Now we go in and we kind of cut these things out. We do some of that abdominal patterning that's in there. This planar structure, you know. I love the top plane, down plane. Flat plane, up plane. And it looks about the same as it was. Specifically this view. Alright, have fun.